Hi, and welcome to 2.3 Isometric Pictorials. So we're going to continue by doing some of these. You can see the main difference. This is flat. The obliques are both flat on the bottom. This is an angle right away. You can tell this is isometric. So I'll show you how to do that. Isometric pictorials means equal measures. Three adjacent faces on a cube will share a single point. Edges converge at one point or will appear as 120 degrees angles or 30 degrees from the horizon line. Now you could have isometric paper. As a matter of fact, if you do have isometric grid line paper at home, um, that would be pretty convenient, but you don't need that paper to do this because if you had grid paper, you could get away by with it by making uh, this angle here. The slope of that angle, you could think of it as like over two up one. So I'm going over two grid lines and then up one. And then I put my ruler here and I could draw my line. So you just go from intersection point over two up one intersection point, put your ruler down and then mark the line like that. So uh, you might have to do that. Remember over two up one, use your ruler for this to help draw the line uh, and you should be good to go. It's a little bit harder, I think, from the isometric paper, but isometric paper can sometimes be confusing, too, because the, the lines look pretty crazy. Uh, you could just go, uh, Google isometric grid paper and an image pops up. You could see it's different from what the normal grid paper is like. Okay. So these three edges represent the height, width, and depth, as you can see and it views so we're going to use this view convention in this class the front is like on the bottom left hand side the right side is on the bottom right hand side and the top is on the top okay don't turn the object this is if you turned it like 90 degrees to the right um, and then you see the left face instead of the right face we want to see the right face front top right side view so actually picking the correct front view um, is the first step and recommendations for how to pick the correct front view are shown here. It says it's the most natural position or use. It shows the best shape and characteristic contours, the longest dimensions, the fewest hidden lines. We're going to talk more about um, hidden lines in multi-view drawings. Um, we kind of alluded to it in 2.1. We talked about different types of lines and how object lines took precedence over hidden lines. Um, we don't want hidden lines whenever possible. So choose your front view accordingly so that your other views wouldn't have hidden lines. Uh, it's the most stable and natural position. So basically like all the, try to make all the mass on the bottom left. That's like the rule of thumb. So if you're looking at this, they're saying that this is the best front view and using my tip before, you could kind of see the mass is more towards the bottom, like you have that big heavy plate on the bottom. So, and then the most of the mass is towards the left. Um, so if you try to make the mass to the bottom left, more often than not, you'll end up um, having a few hidden lines and um, you'll get a good contour. So they're saying that uh, this won't give you any hidden lines. It's the best shape description if you're looking from that. You could see, because if you looked from above, this actually just looks like a square from above with some, with some lines in it. So you wouldn't be able to tell. If you're looking from the side though, all right, you could tell this gets projected, this line gets projected over there. And then you could see, oh, okay, I kind of can visualize what the shape looks like even just by looking at the front view. And actually this line isn't there. It just looks like that from the front view. Okay, that's the most natural position. Like it's not gonna tip over is another way they say, don't make it look like it's about to tip over. This is a nice solid base and the longest dimension is located right there. So the box method we talked about before, this is just more examples of using the glass box. Um, it starts with a sketcher envisioning, envisioning an object contained within an imaginary box. This will help you with proportion and estimation. So you want your picture looking like that. And you can see, is this, is this a box? They, they like drew 
the object first without the box, like you might try to do. And then they drew the box after. And look at that. Is that a nice cube? I don't think so. It's like a, the proportions are all out of whack. So instead, if you draw the box first, it'll help be a guide for where lines are supposed to be. And you'll end up getting some nice proportions. So the following examples show steps used to create isometric sketches of simple geometric objects, including tonal shading and techniques. Um, they don't show the circle one here, but if you're interested in drawing circles, uh, you could take a look at that. That's pretty cool. So here we go. Step one, construct a box. Lay out the box that will contain the isometric view using points and construction lines. Remember, use those construction lines, okay? So we're visualizing a box that looks something like this. I'll oh, see that proportion is a little off because I'm not using a ruler. Okay, so we're drawing the box. Use points and construction lines to identify corners and edges of object faces that occur on the box surface. So you could put the points there, and that'll help you determine where to draw this diagonal line. And this is that isometric paper that I was talking about before, by the way. But you don't need the isometric paper in order to do this. You could do it on regular orthographic grid paper. Then you trace visible edges of uh, the part with thick, dark object lines, just like that. And in this case, there are no inside faces, so you don't draw, have to draw um, what's inside the box. And then tonal shading, like we talked about in the previous video, decide, decide the light source position and add tonal shading of two of the three faces. So uh, the top stays light you don't have to do anything there and then this is some nice cross hatching here they went one direction looks like they went this way and then they went the other way and it, you get it darker than if you just go this way so cross hatching good option for tonal shading and that's looks like it's even with a red pen so even if you had pen you could still do shading you don't need a pencil to do shading uh, it increases the contrast by cross hatching lines on the darkest face so here's another isometric sketch. We're gonna to try to draw this. Now this is different because it has what I call a bumpy. It makes the depth uh, vary. So here it's too deep, but for the rest of the part, it's only one deep. And all those tetra shapes before were all flat. They were only one deep everywhere, but now there's some parts of this that are two cubes deep. So if you have a varying depth, it makes it a little bit trickier. And that's why drawing the glass box first will help guide where to draw the rest of the things, where it's happening, where is it touching the box? And then what's happening inside the box. And you'll go along and it'll kind of draw itself if you know that what the process is. So here's how they do it. I don't know why they changed that picture like that. I guess they're trying to show you like counts of the boxes. So it's three units wide this way, uh, two units tall this way, and two units deep this way. I guess they were trying to show how like it's too deep. I don't know. Use points and construction lines to lay out the box. I do like the PowerPoint slide for this because look at that glass box. Can you visualize what the object's gonna look like inside of that? It should be touching the faces. Use the points and construction lines to identify the corners and edges of object faces that occur on the surface of the box. So where does the object touch the box? Should look like that. And remember, we're using nice construction lines. So it says, before sketch becomes too congested with construction lines, trace visible edges with the object lines. So they recommend drawing the object lines before drawing what's happening inside because they know things are about to get crazy. You're going to draw a lot of construction lines. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. You could do that to keep you grounded. So it says use points and construction lines to identify the corners and edges of the object faces that occur inside the box. So you drop down. I like to go one direction at a time like they just did. They just put 
all the things that kind of go down there. And then you change your thought process. Okay, now these lines are all going this way. And then what lines are going this way? So starting at the face on the right hand side, they're going to draw those lines in. Okay, now don't forget about those corners. You see this one they just drew? Okay, you want to make sure you draw in the corners. Um, and then this one here. And now trace out remaining visible edges with object lines. Just like that. And that. And that. And then that's what you get. Now you could uh, do the, some tonal shading. That's some nice cross hatching too. It looks different, like somebody else might have done it, but uh, looks nice. Okay. Here's an example of an isometric sketch. You could tell because not only the grid paper, but I always look at um, the direction of the front face. So the front face is, well, they used, um, this is actually the front on this, and this is the left side view. Um, but anyway, so the front face is angled this way. Normally in this class, we'll have the front face be on this side, but you could tell this is not the right front view, right? If they chose this as the front view, then you'd have some crazy looking thing that looks like this as your front view. That's not a paper clip. Uh, <laughs> neither is this. This is a closed pin. This is not a closed pin. This is a nicer front view because it shows the contour of the object. And even with just one view, you could tell right away what this thing is supposed to be. As opposed to, like I said, if this was all you saw, then you wouldn't really say, oh, that looks like a paper clip to me. That just looks like maybe a ladder. I don't know. Uh, here's another example of isometric uh, pictorial. You could tell the lines are coming back this way. Um, so isometric. Uh, an historical example from our buddy Earl Silas Tupper invented an airtight Tupper seal in 1947 and patent drawings of bowl and cover in 1957. And this is an isometric pictorial, but he did it uh, without grid lines, so it's possible. And he did it, um, he made a circle, so that's possible as well. But if you're just looking at this, uh, did I just draw a circle on this screen? No, that's more of an ellipse. So your ellipses become, your circles become ellipses in isometric. So for your assignment, you're going to do the five uh, Tetra shapes again, but now you're going to do them in isometric. So make sure you make a new isometric pictorials in your table of contents. Draw the shapes there, take a picture of it, submit it to the um, assignment. Make sure you choose the correct front view. These are all showing the front view. They show the best contour. So these should be on the left. Uh, use a ruler or straight edge to draw all your lines. I want straight lines, all right, not wavy lines. Uh, use tonal shading. It's required to get full points. And do not include these lines. I don't want to see this. This just clutters up the image. I want it to just be one solid piece. All right, so you don't draw those lines to make them look like boxes. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.